Yeah, I just want to know that you were done with it, so it's just those two. Okay. Okay. Call the meeting to order. Um, approval of the minutes of um, April 15th. Did you treat it? Yep. I did too. Okay. By consensus, we'll pass the minutes. Community input? No? Okay. Please? Is it all very happy? Yes. Okay, last week I had to call Townsend Energy in. I was summer's work. The Developed a leak downstairs, one of the pressure relief valves let go. Fortunately, we got it there fairly soon after it happened, so just to let you know we should be getting a bill sometime soon from them for that repair. Now, um, well, I had talked to Saw Bob, and so I had already known about that. Did we defer? The new purchase of the funds? No, I haven't talked about it. We haven't talked about it. I know it, we were told that it could be up to a couple of years still um, have life. It was approved by the vote, so it's up yeah. to the board whether or not or when they want to do it. Okay, all right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, two purchase orders. The first, number 1595, made out to Police One Academy. Here's our yearly training subscription for $1,056, and that will come on a pro development. That is an anticipated expense. It's actually not due until uh, uh, like July 1st or something like that. But, so we won't actually submit. I won't submit it to Caroline until June. Okay. okay. I'll move purchase order uh, 1595 to Police One Academy for $1,056 for annual training subscription. I'll second it. Any discussion? What does that include? What is that? Um, it's a subscription for everyone, so for everyone in the department to go to the Police One Academy. And uh, we have uh, they required monthly training. Sometimes it's an hour class, sometimes it's a three hour class. And it's on all aspects of law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, ethics, uh, harassment, uh, active shooter, motor vehicle stops, and whatnot. Is this all online? It's all online. Oh, okay. Yes. And then they get certificates that they complete it? And they get certificates for it, and they get credit for the taking the Any other questions? No. Want to uh, make a vote? I already moved it. You yeah. Oh. You are ready to vote? Yes. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Purchase order number 1596 made out to the city of Dover. Uh, repairs to Cruiser 73. Uh, last week, some of the idiot lights started to go off and they had replaced a seat belt uh, mechanism, a sway bar. Uh, that's probably $400. And we had to put brakes on the Cruiser number 71. So I estimated that about $500 for a grand total of $900 to come out of the vehicle maintenance account. Okay. I'll move purchase order 1596 to the city of Dover for um, $900. So I'm going to say up to $900. Because mm -hmm. one thing hasn't been done yet, right? Well, they've both been done. Oh, okay. Oh. They've both been done. Oh, you yet. just don't have the... They have to get the, the, we, we don't get the invoice from the city of Dover until two or three months after the service okay. is oh, done. Okay. okay. So for repairs to Cruiser 71 and Cruiser 73. All right, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. This Saturday is the uh, DEA drug take back day from 10 to 2. So if you have unwanted medications and prescription medicines and over the counter stuff that you want to get rid of, just uh, let us know. Drop it off with the PD. Uh, we should have a blurb on our Facebook page uh, tomorrow, and I've asked Tia to send out a blurb through the email system. So mm -hmm. usually get a decent amount. We do, yes. Yeah, yeah we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. 
How often is that done? Uh, sometimes three times a year. Okay. Yeah. This is the first for 2018. Mm -hmm. This one. 2019. Yes, 2019. <laughs> but no, this isn't the hurrying people for the last dollar direction traffic, so. Oh. <laughs> I'm there. Okay. <laughs> so the fire I was. I can't get there from here. So yeah, you can. Yeah, keep, keep on going. <laughs> there was a fire on Gulf Road. Yeah, somewhere in Dover on the Gulf Road. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're, they're shifting there. everything up the Bear Road. Uh, I was shifting everything up the Bear Road. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, there were several times, uh, several points where the traffic actually got backed up past your house, past Sligo Road. Oh, wow. And down the hill a little way. So. We called in one of my offices a little bit earlier. I said, you go to Portland Avenue and Bear Road and let's start getting some of this traffic off Bear Road. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's all that I have for you tonight. Anything for me? Anything for you? No. No? Great. Thank you. Have a good okay. night. No one from Fire Highway? Good evening. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Oh. Do I need him? suggest that if the board is is willing to go along with the project at this cost that that's something that's more specifically outlined in the contract it's asphalt laid in place which is to say installed okay and it says that specifically in the contract so that there's not any misunderstanding about well, that so I wouldn't be really concerned about Pike doing that but um, it's more explicit Chris from Pike said that we could have like draw up our own contract, or that's what most towns use right there. Mm -hmm. So, the choice is yours. And I can give, if you guys sign this off, if Caroline wants to make another one with another version of it, we can have them sign off on that second version. But the wording is not good. You know, okay. Yep, I'm good then. They're willing to sign the other contract, so if you're happy to have the other contract in place, then you can sign this tonight and it at least lets Pike know that you want to move forward right. and George can schedule. So we and in the meantime, spot. we can get this other contract revised and signed and <coughs> they're happy to do that. So that should be workable. Okay. Is that good with you? Yep. Okay. So, 
additional motion? To Are we going to do a PO for this, or is it these enough? Um, it, that's enough. Okay. Because it's a contract. Okay. All right. Um, so. Yeah, I think I got three eighteen seven fifty, but might as well just make sure. If you would, um, you could reference the court numbers. Oh, okay. If that's easier. I just want to make sure we have a total. Three thirty-eight, two fifty. Okay. No. Don't trust me. No, no. Two one seven. That that's correct according to what he put in his. That's what you so get when you add those together. Is three twenty-eight. Three thirty-eight. Three thirty-eight. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then. Um. I don't see a quote number. Just item numbers. Yeah, I don't see a quote number either. Can, can we put a number when it says bid number? Can, can we put a number? You can certainly put a number and reference it by the number that yeah. you installed there. Yeah. Sure. And then bid number one, 2019 one. Sure. All right, so I, I move that we accept um, bid number 2019-1 uh, from Pike Industries for uh, $120,625. I second that. And that's for the Heritage Drive section of it. Yeah. Yep. And it's the Heritage Drive and Moses Cow. Yep, okay. Any further discussion? Oops. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. All right. And then I will move um, bid number 2019 2 from Pike Industries um, for $217,625 for um, paving from. Bear Road to Penchill Road um, for on Slugger Road. Okay. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. Nope. All those okay. in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. So are we going to take a copy of these before he takes um, them? I would like to. Can you pick them up in the morning? And I'll sign them. Hey, do I have to sign it? I have to sign it. Please do. He, he's going to come here again. Okay. He'll probably come here. So we may wait till we have that signed. Okay. Uh, that six twenty-five. I am the buyer. Yes. And then today's day, right? Yes. Okay. So who's getting it? You I'm going to take this. Okay. I'm going to actually have him call you. Okay. That way they have to discuss that and you should say anything. And okay. Okay. I plan on moving forward this week on similar projects down there so we can get ahead of the game. Uh, like the cross culverts and stuff. We have to get in before they grind the road. Mm -hmm. So I get a PO here for culverts for $2,198. But that's for eight 15 inch culvert. Uh, by 15 inch by 20 foot sections and for two 20 foot by 24 inch sections to cover it to replace down there with a slate. Out of the culvert fund that we're going to use. Can does it, well, does it say it on the PM? I can, can you put it on the left I, column? I can do it. Yeah, culvert fund. Culvert fund. Culvert fund. Yeah. Or you can on the left where it says account number. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'll move purchase order. 1632 to Elimination Systems, Inc. for $2,198.72 for culverts. I'll second it. Any discussion? Um, so you'll you'll pull out whatever culverts are Remove the metal culverts. We have some culverts that are actually protruding out of the top of the road now. Okay. We're going to be dropping down a foot and a half below the grade so the water, you know, to eliminate cross and everything else. Yep. So we want to replace all the cross covers because they're steel and 10 to 1. By the time we get them dig out, they're going to be rotted. And these are going to be all plastic with the way everyone puts it today. Okay. They put plastic in? Yep. What does that, how does that hold up with freezing? It's it does. No different. It's, it actually moves better than steel. And steel moves mm -hmm. and flex, plastic it flex with the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the life expectancy on that is four or five times what 
with regular culvert tie, they don't break. Wow. Mm. Yeah, they brought out. I mean, the metal culvert brought out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? I mean, you'll see all the work they're doing now is plastic or PVC piping. And even the gas lines don't get uh, plastic instead of gas uh, metal. Mm hmm. I'm going to bring up about the truck. Uh, I don't know where we're going to go with that. <laughs> yeah, I said something. I didn't think you got anything. Um, as long as I have to go, oh, just, okay. just, just pass them this way and I'll. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have, this is what makes sense us for the truck. Based on the visual inspection, the truck is currently valued at around twenty dollars to $22,000. We put it in Craigslist for twenty two five, and we received a full non-argued payment. You know, we want to pay for it. We have a deposit on it. However, after we, Caroline and I spoke today, we noticed in the back of the book it has to go out to bid. Mm -hmm. And if we go out to bid, they're not going to get nowhere near that for the truck. So it's a choice you people are going to have to make. Well, I, I, th I, don't, I think we can put it out to bid with a minimum bid. I, I don't think there's any rule against that. Well, he can bid. Yes, yes, he can. But we, where we put it for twenty two five, and we have somebody that bought that, that wants that truck for twenty two five. Mm -hmm. I know we just follow the rules. That truck. I think we put it out to bid. All bids need to be in by Friday, and we take the highest one. Let this gentleman know. I assume this gentleman. I shouldn't make that assumption. That we're sorry because we did things. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't pull his offer. I don't think he will. I mean, I have somebody else in mind for the truck, too. I mean, but they know what the price was in the thing, so, you know. Yeah, you can, can yeah, you put out a price there for sure, so, yeah. Did you talk to legal? No. So, legal inquiries is likely to not comment because it's a specific situation. So I can reach out to town council which would be very much worth the while if we end up getting a more reasonable price for the truck. If they're going to tell us to put it out to bid and somehow we end up with $800, uh, you, know, put, you know, sending the question to legal is just an added expense that we're not going to recoup. Mm -hmm. So my guess is in the end he's going to tell us to do something along Miles' idea. It's putting it up for bid. I think so. I don't, I don't think there's you know, to be compliant with the, the authority to sell it in the warrant article. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to have to. Where do, what happens with what we already know? Okay. What has already happened and he's already given a deposit? So we can refund the deposit if he doesn't get it or wants to withdraw his bid. Okay. Okay. And he may drop his bid. Yeah. So you have a choice. <laughs> Unfortunate incident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I mean, you've seen how bids work. I know, that's why we went off and did, wanted to go off on... Yeah. So, like, what if we had wanted to trade this truck? $10,000. Yeah, no, no. The, the, but for the, the legality of that. You can't do it? You need to have the dealer bid on it? Like, that's a really good point. It sort of implies to my mind that you don't trade it in because you are essentially selling it to the dealer. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a really good point. We've never traded anything in, I don't think, have we? Well, they were going to give us $10,000 for that truck. I know, but I don't think history says we've I, I don't traded think we anything. Have, but yeah. it has been an ongoing conversation. It's something that yeah. could have happened at any one of a number of times. You know, like yeah. the Volvo, you know, they thought about trading that in for, or a skid skid the skid steer for a newer model. It's something that comes up in conversation. So while the language was written to make best use of the opportunity to sell a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. it's not working out that that's going to bear us the best fruit, it seems. Does it specify the truck in, in, in that article? Yeah. Any surplus vehicles or equipment, I don't think you're going to around it. And you can't put a value of it having, it has to be 
by a certain, it has to have at least a certain amount. Oh, you can't, sure, can. sure you can. I don't think there's anything that says you can't put a minimum bid. Yeah. It must be a minimum bid or more. I, th I think you can absolutely, yep. th there's nothing that says oh. you can't do that. Okay. And it's just the highest bidder. Yeah, we don't have to accept any bids either. Right. Um, if you, if you, they're all low and you don't feel as though any of them meet the mark, you cannot accept any of them. Okay, so can we make the minimum bid the price that we have? You could. It's still an unfortunate situation with the buyer. Well, with the, with the gentleman or whoever what it right. was. Right, someone um, comes in at 22. And a dollar. You know, and a dollar. 22, 5, 22, 5, 5, 10. Yeah. So it doesn't negate that. It was... But at least if we can get what, what closer to the value of the, of the piece that we mm. have versus... Yeah, you know, selling it for five thousand. Right you know? Yeah. Right. Um, does it need to go on the paper? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just on our web page or whatever. It has to be duly public, but there are no laws about how you put something out to bid. Oh, okay. You know, it would certainly. The, then how how were we able to take them to the surplus auction before? What do you mean? How? Well, because an auction is a bidding process. But it's not what we get, right? No, you, you they, they get a percentage of it, right? But you're still putting it out to bid. You're still, it's a still a bidding process. Uh, I mean, it's kind of on consignment, so to speak, but it's still a bidding process. Because hmm. we decided not to go that road either, because you don't tend to get too much when you go into the auction. The uh, auction. Right. So, okay. So, it's your pleasure. Um, so, I, I, I move that we put truck number one out to bid for the minimal bid of 22500 And bids are due. And how long do we have to keep it open for? Is there a minimum? You know, I really don't. I, I'll check with legal inquiries, but I really don't think that there are any rules as long as you're making a public announcement and posting it in all of your regular ways about, I, I don't think, you want to be, give some people reasonable time to respond, but I don't think you have to, there are not minimum time frames. Have you talked to the gentleman who's given us a deposit? He oh, he, he's aware that it could be refused. Uh, okay, but he knows that we have to put it out to the... I haven't talked to him today. Uh, okay. Okay. He's away on vacation, but he said he's available by phone. We didn't want to bother him until I know okay. what's going on. All right. Okay. So we just have to make sure that we have his availability of returning his deposit if he's not the. We can absolutely do that. Okay. All right. And if you could send him, I'll get you the bid document when, it, when it's ready, and you can send it to him so he knows he has it. You can submit. respond that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think we want bids by noon on Friday. Do you think that's. It could be as late as one on Monday because to, okay. to my my suggestion would be that you open them Monday night. Next, next Monday's meeting. Yes, yeah. okay. not at six thirty or seven because you have swearing in an officer okay. and then other okay. source, but you can pick you know eight o'clock or seven thirty yeah. or something. Okay. All right, so, so one on Monday. One on Monday. One on Monday. Okay. okay. Voted on it. <laughs> Keep me in the loop, Cameron. Okay, so I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? No? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So we need to put it on the website. Oh, yeah. That we're going to post road construction signs this week for yes. Sligo. So okay. we can start to at least get the public aware and let them know that paving should be within, he's saying, two to three weeks. Well, so they're going to do Sligo first? No. Oh. They want to, they'll probably do Heritage. Okay. But, but in the meantime, keep he's going to be digging up Sligo. Yes. You are, yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll uh, start doing some ditch work. Do you need to get a flagger for that? Or you can handle it's not a ditch traffic. the road. <laughs> yeah. No, we waived all them. Wait, uh, the <coughs> They normally would add five thousand dollars in there for flagging. Okay. When we did Wedge Run and Heritage last year, Bob says we want we get certified to flag, so we we'll be on the site anyway. 
see what's going on at the same time, so we'll take care of flagging. So we eliminated ten thousand dollars out of the project. So mm -hmm. great. Okay. Uh, Black holes are just a whole market here. That's intended. Okay. Yeah, I want to know. Do you want to repair these flagpoles, or do we? So the board had asked to see if you could um, do anything with them. Are they repairable, or do yeah. you? I think they're, they're actually just pieces of pipe put together. We can bring them, take them down. We'll make them so they can be taken down to fix and paint. You know, we can have Mike weld up something, and we can fix them. And I don't think it's going to be a lot of money. I can look into what the, the price of pipe costs. It shouldn't be too big a deal. Okay. But I believe, you know, we either we got to straighten them out, or tear them, out, or take them out because uh, you know it looks like crap. Does, and we're going to move them back away from the power lines a little bit until we don't have flags tangled in the wires. <laughs> but uh, we can, you know, make the brackets and embed them in cement or whatever. They do have a name on them that were donated by somebody, so. Yeah. At least we probably ought to fix them up and keep them functional. Okay. Does anyone fly a flag there? <coughs> it, was, it hasn't been because the poles have been broke for so long. I mean, okay. it's, uh, it is the town's park, so I, whether we should be flying flags or not, I mean, you know, it's a choice you have to make. We fix them to fly flags, but we just don't take, you know, take them down and be done with it. There is a plaque on the ground. In the cement, uh, on a cement, on a rock, yeah. then there's two flagpoles there. I'm assuming they'd like to have flags flying on them if they donate them. So, uh, who, like, who goes and raises and lowers flags? And is this police chief manages the one out here? The fire department manages their own. Their own. And I'm just curious if, because we don't want to leave them flying all the time, because something's going to. Them or I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Would the Legion take that on? You can probably get a flag to install yeah. that, but I, I mean, somebody to keep an eye on it would be. Who maintain? You maintain that, right? We maintain the flag. The, 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 the park. Yeah. Well, why don't we? Why don't we see what the cost is to repair, and then go from there? I, mean, I don't want to put something else on someone's plate that's already full. You know. Okay, so we're gonna not do it yet. We're just gonna see how much it costs, and then you get back to us and yeah, we'll yeah, think about it. Yeah, we can check. Yeah, you know, we can check it out. See what it would cost to fix it. Okay. I don't think it'd be a big deal, but you know, again, I'm not quite a while, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh. Fire department salaries. 
by all means, if you want to discuss it, you're welcome to discuss it. You had been holding off until you determine the police salaries mm -hmm. with Mike, but that's up to you if you have a still. You want to just wait until Mike comes yeah. in? Well? Okay, we're going to defer it until next week. CIP committee? That's a placeholder. We're waiting for the budget committee to meet and delegate one of theirs and the planning board. Budget. And then we'll bring that information back here. And, and I'm not sure it needs to be on the agenda anymore. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll work um, just enough meeting after Space that. needs committee draft charge. So you all received a draft mm -hmm. of the space needs. Um, I, I would suggest that you, I, I don't think that there's a discussion item at this point, but yeah, that's I'm up to you all. I haven't had a chance to thoroughly review it. Yeah, I need to digest it a little bit as well. Okay, let's leave it on there and we can bring it back up. Eversource, April 29th. Yes, they're coming in next week to talk about what the ROI is to switch over um, all the town buildings over to LEDs. It would keep the energy consumption cost level for three years, after which the project would be paid for and consumption costs would go down considerably. So they have fire department information now, so that will be included in the proposal. Um, there was a question as to whether or not they use enough electricity to warrant including them. Um, so, he'll speak to that next week. Okay. So it's the town hall, it's um, highway, the highway, and, and, and the fire. fire. So does this, the schools not, uh, uh, do they have LED now? Um, they have a lot of LEDs. I don't yeah. know if they're completely LEDs. But they were not part of the proposal? Or they're not, not part, part of this, this proposal, okay. no. No, any, any other questions? No. no? Okay. This, <laughs> so, so this is a, um, a request by the school. It's an idea. Um, I, I talked to George about it. So, For the record, I'm just going to say what it is. Painting fish by Kate uh, Catch, Catch Basin. Yes. So you, you've all seen this, no doubt, at some point. You know, you've seen on the pavement a picture of a fish near mm -hmm. Catch Basin. Mm -hmm. And the point of that is to give messages to people that what you put down storm drains ends up in the river and yep. you should take care with that. So the school reached out because they were looking for projects for um, a group of boys um, between grades two and six mm -hmm. that spans all those age groups. Um, some kind of activity that they could all do together. Mm -hmm. They were looking for input, and by the way, that's an ongoing request in case any of you has any ideas about that. But um, it was an idea I had that they liked that they could create templates and paint fish by the storm drains and that would help with our NS4 permit. Okay. But it would also be useful to, to the fire department, to the highway department, because when they plow, <laughs> they cover storm drains, but they need to keep them clear for drainage. Mm -hmm. So if they're installed in the pavement, like not in the middle of the street, but pointing to the catch basin from further out, then it would help them see them in the winter and make sure they can keep them clear. Mm. So, the roads are your domain, so how do you all feel about allowing the children to paint fish by the catch basins? So, it's just going to be like a black fish? Or I would hope that it would be yellow, okay. or, or some other so stand-up, consistent stand-up yeah. color. Blue, or Blue yeah. maybe, but yeah. yeah, something visible that's yeah. not black, but is consistent. Yeah. Yeah, I hope. I think I have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it would only be in the downtown area, you okay. know, the storm drain area mm -hmm. and not on the state roads. So it's on our local roads. So like a, a template that they're going to spray paint? Uh, yes. Is that going to hold up? Or if it does, it does, it doesn't, it doesn't? Well, there's that about it. It's another project for a couple of years down the road for another set of kids, mm -hmm. unless we want to keep it up. 
But yes, I wouldn't expect that it would last more than a couple of years. Um, how are they going to manage the kids on the road? <laughs> well, there's going to be adults in that. There, there will be adults there. Okay. Adults yeah. with them, yes. They'll probably have several adults, and they can do different locations at the same time, probably. To okay. limit everyone right there at the road. Yes. I would leave yeah. that to them, too. Yeah. And I can offer that caution, please. But mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Do we have to vote on it? <laughs> I think a consensus, consensus is fine. You seem and you're okay. to have a consensus okay. about yeah. it. Okay. Sounds good. All right. <coughs> okay, appointments, tree warden, fence viewer, and parks and rec. So, we have no applicants for this. In fairness, Celia had requested that I put out more information about um, their duties and such, and I have not had a chance to do that. So. Um, I can so, follow up with that, but at this point, the deadline's passed. You can extend the deadline. Okay. It's up to you. You want to handle that? Um, Is there actual list of the duties of this job? Well, so there are um, some RSAs that point to things that, you know... Because wouldn't the parks and recs actually be responsible for the flag poles? Because that's a part. That's a part. Probably, you know. Yeah, there would be a, a, a people to go to when you have questions about it. Because it's the one across from the fire station, then it's the one down Martin here, Park. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, but further, the Parks and Rec is really interesting um, and and a little bit troubling in that it's not very well defined. But it seem, you know, it seems to me that it would be the group. Um, That would decide, you know, to paint the gazebo at the park, mm -hmm. or to, you know, add a bench at the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Potentially could. delegate more townland to make a park, or install a playground, or you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. It could have, you know, but it doesn't. It's not really clear. It would take some research to determine what is its official name, and, and was it given an original charge, and when, mm -hmm. and what is the original charge. So. Okay. So, um, and, and, you know, that's why, you know, it, it's, it didn't go out with a whole lot of information because mm -hmm. there is not a whole lot of information easily at hand. Of course, there's research to do, but it's not as though those positions have been <coughs> very active yeah. of late, so. Okay. Which doesn't mean that that can't change. No, yeah. Did someone, may I add um, something to this about Parks and Rec? Uh -huh. I just happened to know, I was reading a deed for... Sandy Banks, yeah. and it said it was donated on condition that the Parks and Rec committees would be managing it. And I suspect, and I think I was reading after that, that we formed one, so it's like in the 30s, I think. Is that the place off yes. of Locust Street? In Foundry, yes, yes. That is for recreational use yeah. only. Yeah. So I just wanted to really put that and it is in their hands. hands, yes. I would really like to see that be used. But I just wanted to say that I remember seeing that when I looked at the deed. Okay, thank you. Because um, I think that would be a great asset for the park, yeah, people are the rec department. Doing something with yep, it. Yes. exactly. So I had um, forgotten, because um, it was March 19th, that John Hensman had reached out to me and asked um, to be appointed tree warden. And I don't know if we want to take that under consideration tonight, or I don't know why he didn't reach out again, maybe he didn't see the call. Would you like me to follow up with him? Um, sure. Okay. I'm going to talk to the rec department to see if any of them are interested in being on here with that potential of having... Yes, but I think we still need to go back to the 1930s or whenever it was mm -hmm. that it was created to mm -hmm. see what's its charge. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And yeah, what's its authority. Many. Well, I think one of them is already on it. It was on it last year. Kelly. She was in that position. Yes. At town meeting. So. It would be really nice, though, if people were more aware of Sandy Banks. How and do you even get there? 
I mean, well, so there, there are paths of off of Stevens Court, which is off of um, Locust Street. There's a path off there. There's a path. There's another path off of um, right next to uh, like Willie Street Extension. I think there's another one off of. Well, it's right next to um, Kelly Haynes' house. Okay. Yeah. Right. There are a couple of little footpaths. Your brother's been tired. He used to play there all the time at the, when they were young. Yeah. I just remember there being fights there. Well, probably. David doesn't have your brother. <laughs> yeah, more than likely. But it, it, they used to use it all the time when Harry was growing up. Hmm. So, all right. Well, uh, let's um, let's put it up for next week. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Employee recognition dinner region space school. So um, I was asked to reach out to the school. I have done so, and they do find that that would be an appropriate use, and that that date is free. And the gym is not yet going to be under construction. That won't happen until after July 1st. So it seems workable. Okay. Um, we need to fill out a facilities. I, I need to fill out a facilities form. We need to talk about setup and tables and chairs and, and a firmer plan. But um, it's hypothetically workable. Okay. Are we thinking this is going to be a public? Well, that's what I mean. There's still a lot of details to, to work out about this. Go I mean, there's a kitchen there, but... I'm not sure we would have access to the kitchen unless we have... I, I um, can't the the yeah. Danny Mulligan, who runs the kitchen, right. would have to be there, I think. And, um, and um, he did mention... I only just heard back from him today. He did say something about having um, custodial staff there or somebody to delegate with, you know, um, a key. So I don't know if they're going to... how they're going to work out a custodial fee, or mm -hmm. if that's applicable. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get the sense of that from him, but he, since he mentioned that, um, I need to follow up with him. And well, you have to quite that. fill out that form. Oh, I know about the form. Yes. So if you fill out the form, then it's going to say what the fees are on that form, if there's any, I believe. So I'll yeah. still work that out with him, yeah. but... You're talking um, about the principal, right? Yes. Okay. But it sounds workable. Yeah. We still need to, as you say, discuss logistics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, so that's um, June 29th, just to confirm. That was the date, that's a Saturday night that you all discussed. Okay. So I think that's pretty flexible, just not after July 1, because after July 1, the gym might be. We could go up a week earlier than a week Potentially. later. Potentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mike, I can't do the 22nd. Mike can't do the 22nd. Oh, okay. So um, that's why we went to the 29th. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we could go a week. But I think school still might be in session. I, I don't know. But it's a Saturday night, so it oh. might not matter. So mm -hmm. yeah. But I think there is flexibility there. Yeah. The the biggest thing was, is it an is appropriate it use? Mm -hmm. And yeah, are they okay with the idea? Yeah. They seem to be. So okay, good. I'll follow up with that. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, gas expansion in Rollinsford. Yes. So with me, but there was an email. I was totally confused where they were. So it comes through Dover up Portland Ave. I'm not sure where it ends, but it doesn't branch off of that. Do you have that email? Yeah. The map that they had was not clear at all. Okay. It was... I didn't look at the map. Yeah, I didn't look at a map either. Uh, was it this? So there were, so it says Town of Kingston, natural gas line. Is that wrong, sir? Yeah. Maybe that's Okay, right. so they're saying here, what's that? <laughs> um, I think and that's Rollins Road. No, because if you mm -hmm. go this way a little bit, mm -hmm. what, what, where's Fresh Creek? That's next to Citizens Bank. It's a class six road that... See, to me, I thought that was Route 4. Mm -hmm. And then, I so it runs parallel here. to Route 4. Fresh Creek runs parallel okay. to Route So four. here's the Dover line, I think? Nope. I know. Is it confusing or what? What's this? Okay. I couldn't figure out where it, where okay. it was going. Here's, here's Portland Ave. So this is, oh, no. That's Rollins Road, they're saying. Right? What is that? This is Portland Ave. Right. This must be Oak Street and then Rollins? But Up this to the is Sun's the country line. club. So maybe, oh, do you think that's Oak Street? 
Yeah, I do. It doesn't make sense that there's no connection to any other road, but... It might be just their lines. Yeah. Where their lines are, their and line. it doesn't include other roads, perhaps. So what purpose would it serve to do this? So, it's a service to potential customers, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. they, want, they want to increase their customer base, mm -hmm. so that means they're going to want to dig up roads to install infrastructure. Residents might appreciate that. They might want the option. Um, I would want input from Tom Clark about code mm -hmm. and police and fire about. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, will they put the roads back to when the, well, what it was or better? In theory, yes, they would need a dig permit. They're also going to have to go through the state and get dig permits through the state for the state roads. Okay. Um, yes, you have to fill out a form, leave a deposit, and it's refundable after a year if the roads are, you know, Back to so, but, but they're still cutting up your roads, which mm -hmm. is not to say that you don't do it if it's something that the mm -hmm. residents care about, but is it something, I would also want to, like, talk to the planning board about it, is it something that mm -hmm. really matters to residents, because it's a lot of... Having natural gas is a huge... Savings, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. So this says <laughs> the entire town. So really, like, what? So I would want to know more from them about what is their time frame about that, and are they looking for any kind of investment from the town, or they just want permission to right. over a period of three years dig up every road, or what uh, is the oh, plan? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I honed in on that, but it's expand our current natural gas franchi franchise rates to serve the entire town. Not that they're going to do this all at once, mm -hmm. but they want the right to. Well, so, so that, to my mind, is a franchise agreement similar to Comcast, mm -hmm. where the infrastructure exists and somebody has the right to use it and others don't. And or a pay fee for, for a fee, fee to the town. Yep. But to my mind, that would also sort of imply an expansion of infrastructure, because I'm not sure what the point is with, I mean, I could be wrong, but right now it's available to so few residents. Are they planning to come in and talk to us? They are reaching out to, yeah. and, and because I think I they would certainly really, would be nowhere prepared to give them an answer tonight or whatever. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I okay. think this is the very beginning of a process okay. where we could, should consult um, Tom Clark and fire Absolutely. and police Absolutely. and yeah. planning. So they're looking it. for. Uh, so I am reaching out to understand what the proper protocol would be for requesting a letter. Support from the Rollinsford Select Board for Unitil's petition to the New Hampshire Public Utilities Commission to expand our natural gas franchise. And he included two other letters, Kingston and Atkinson. Okay. So you can read those letters and yeah. see if, in essence, you support. Well, I saw what their letter. Yeah, it was pretty basic. Yeah. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, we're okay with it. Go for it. Yeah. Well, but. Uh, um, but they may already have it in their town, too. Well, right. What does it mean to say that, what, what are you signing off on? Right. What, you know, what are you okay with? Yeah. What, what are the implications of consent, I mm -hmm. guess? Yeah, because I know nothing about that. I know that it's underground and then, right. and, and Dover has it. I know they have it from both down Route 4, because they lived down in there and he had it, but oh. that's all I, I don't know why. Not to say that we don't want it, I just, I would... I think we need to reach out to I would just. Bit. Would like to know, about this. know a little bit more yeah. about what they're hoping for. If they if they call, they, we'd be glad to hear them. I would say, but we also need to make sure that everyone else is either part of it or, um, you know. Do you want me to follow up with them, or do you want me to leave it? Let's leave it for now. And I can you just talk to Tom about it Absolutely. first, and then who on the planning board? John Cubs is the only one I think who would have some real knowledge about whether or not. I would just reach out to him. I mean, tell him we have nowhere near making a decision, but need to send him how he feels about it. And, and Tom. Are you okay yep. with that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Kingston strongly supports. Mm-hmm.
Atkinson discussed the proposal. Mission response with this to the overall project will be met with great enthusiasm. So maybe we even, I, I don't know. I think it's. Uh, that is, that is interesting. Like, you know, if I could go where I think you stopped, um, we could reach out to them and find out why they're enthusiastic yeah. or whether or not they had any concerns about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm more interested in who said no and why they said no, mm -hmm. too, though. Yeah. And that you don't exactly. get to know. Yeah. I would first talk to these two people. Yes. Our two people, that. and then yeah. once we hear their opinion, then we can reach out to those at those two um, groups. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Um, policy review. Is this saying that these are the first three that we need to tackle? So, no, oh. it's not. And I encourage you that I, I need to, to do that. Um, no, it's not. Um, I'm going to suggest that we start with personnel, but that there are subtopics of personnel. And I have a call into um, an attorney associated with Primex. We're playing phone mm -hmm. tag, but he will share with me a host of template policies that we can review and adopt, I think, in pretty short orders that, that I think would be an improvement over what we have. So I'd like to suggest we start with that because I think it's, you know, while I wouldn't want to adopt a whole employee handbook um, right now, mm -hmm. I think there are pieces and parts that we can implement mm -hmm. to supersede what we have in place and work in that direction. But there are a multitude of things under that. Mm -hmm. um, second to that, <coughs> um, perhaps the board policy, the select board policy. I had shared that with you. Shared with me? All of you. All of you? Yes. So I'm going to send that. that I'm going to send that one again. When um, did you send that? It was a couple months ago now. No. Yeah. Please share it. Yes. So that would be my recommendation. Is the aspects, you know, the, the separate parts of um, a, the, the employee handbook is what mm -hmm. I'd like to call it, rather than a personnel mm -hmm. policy. Break it down into components, and then um, we'll get a good start on that. Yeah, I think the handbook is a great way to have that, and then have them sign it, saying they received it, and, you know, and I will, oh, I, I will bring mine in to show Oh, you. all right, and then... Yeah. Um, the board policy, I have a good template, and you can start reviewing that and see what you okay. think of that. I, I'm hoping and thinking that those will be pretty, um, will require review, but shouldn't mm -hmm. need quite as extensive revision as some other things. Mm -hmm. Not quite as um, energy intense. Yep. Okay. So, so I'll forward, I will send things along to you um, from the attorney as soon as I have them, but I can send them, I'll send the board policy over to Mark so you can okay. start looking at that. Okay. Are we going to talk about the elements and the credit card elements or is that? We certainly can if you want to, because aside from the purchasing policy as a whole, whether or not you really want to revise the purchasing policy. Um, that, I think, would be a good idea, and it would be it will rise to the top of the list once we have a bookkeeper in place mm -hmm. that will enable better functionality. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I wouldn't suggest changing policy before we can really implement it mm -hmm. well. Um, I, but in I the meantime, you absolutely can one. address yeah. To some extent, you can you can address the purchasing limit and the credit card limit outside of the policy because that's pretty. Well, I know that that was one of the things that some department heads would want, but my biggest concern is um, cash flow, um, certain times of the year, and and so I I don't know how much I want to up it. <laughs> yeah, I I think we need to be cautious. I mean, I think it definitely has room to move up, but. But yeah, you know, all of a sudden we hit with five thousand dollars in unexpected spending. Yeah, because it could be 
It could be multiple POs, not just one PO. You right. know, either that or have one. Well, you know, if you can add a total to it. But the other thing you can do is change purchasing limits for um, specific positions or specific type of positions or for specific types of purchases, which can add flexibility. It doesn't yeah. have to be an across the board. Yeah. Right. Limit. I just think we still are. We still have some that. Spend and then come in with a PO, and that concerns me. That if we gave them higher limits, that that would, you know. So I think there are other ways to address that because there are a couple of. I was thinking about that. Um, there are a couple of reasons, common reasons, why that happens, and one is because outside agencies just send an annual invoice, mm -hmm. and they had oh, yeah. to expect it, but they weren't necessarily thinking it was this month. So mm -hmm. that's typically a purchase order after the fact. Mm -hmm. Emergencies is another and then one. Emergencies. However, I think if they have an emergency, they can immediately or next business day notify you at least that they have an emergency. Well, Someone right. needs to know about it other than the people that are doing it. You know? So that's that's a deeper policy, a policy. language yes. thing, you know. Yes. Okay. I just think sometimes we just just do it just to make it easy. I don't know. I just, I just need it. That's why I'm kind of reluctant to make it more because then it's that well, much more that we yeah, have to worry about. It puts us in a position, so, so you're going to not approve of an emergency repair. Like, right. We, right. We don't have a choice at that point. Right. Um, so, yeah. The other thing you can do, which might seem a little counterintuitive, is fill in other financial policies first and kind of work your way backwards to the purchasing policy, mm -hmm. having a fund balance policy, mm -hmm. having, mm -hmm. you know, other yeah. things in place and, and sort of put your head in in that w and, and look at the sort of the practical aspect worked out and, and it can help inform this conversation. I yeah. Think. Because I think that, that sometimes they're thinking, well, it's I have my budget, my budget has gotten approved. So it's my money to spend. But if you all did it at the same time, then we're in trouble because, you know, it, yeah. it could hurt us in, you know, like say May and June is a, is a tough couple of months and October, November, December, you know, until because of your taxes coming in and stuff. So I just want to make sure that we don't give them too much. Well, so, rain. right. And, and it could also, um, Maybe there's a way in, in the language, again, in the finer point of the policy, to speak to things that are budgeted in certain categories mm -hmm. of anticipated expenses mm -hmm. are either not a purchase order category and are just, you know, approved through other miscellaneous bills through the board as they are now mm -hmm. or through me mm -hmm. or are just exempt from a certain part of the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are different categories of expenses and, and I think you can treat them some of them differently, with care. Yeah, I think once we get you your your help, it'll take some of that off of you, then then we can probably work some kind of a process that it does, you know. That, that can, can allow higher. for better reporting, which can alleviate some. Well, you could give a you know an approval based on what we say. You can do this up to you know, right. and they don't have to wait for our meeting or something like right. that. You know, it gives you more flexibility to take care of the, it immediately versus waiting for us to have another meeting. Um, if we give her, you know, an, an, an amount that she has the authorization to do, yep. you know, That's and knowing what time of year it is and stuff, and move. You know, I think I have to wait for the board because right now we're in a cash flow problem. Then they're aware of it without just, you know, going forward yes. with it. Yes. That's where I'm I like that idea that it sort of flows to a central person and you, and you have a much broader view of everything that's going on mm -hmm. and develop reporting that can be given to the board mm -hmm. that shows here, you know, 10 things that got bought this week. Mm -hmm. But she's got to get, get her help first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So, I mean, I'm not saying that we won't do something to help us, but we just need to get the resources in house first and then work out something. I agree. And I think it's going to be something that's probably um, 
some adjustments and see mm -hmm. how it goes and yeah. evaluation and yep. see, you know, I, I would like to think that these things, even once approved, will be consistently evaluated so that we can see how well Absolutely. they're working and Absolutely. adjust accordingly. Okay. So let's just we'll leave it on there and okay. keep it on now. Um, okay. So I guess we're at town administration standing on board members activities and updates. Um, this Wednesday I have a stormwater um, meeting at 7 here. Is that at uh, 7? I thought it was at 6.30. Oh, maybe it is 6.30. This Wednesday, don't we have yes. a budget meeting? Yeah, stormwater will be in the other room. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I don't know the time. We'll confirm time. But that's it. I have a budget committee meeting on Wednesday at 6.30, and I have a rec meeting on Thursday at 6. 6. That's it. That's enough this week. <laughs> so, that's all I have. Um, town administrator update? So, um... You may know that the ZBA, I just want to give you a broad overview of the week at a glance. Last week, the ZBA had a hearing for proposed use on Oak Street on two non-conforming lots to be merged with a duplex put on. Miles, I think you were on the planning board yep. and that was her the conditional use permit. Um, there was a lot of um, confusion on the board. They're doing a really good job. New members being very thoughtful. Um, but it is very confusing, the difference between a special exception and the variance and, and the different processes. And they're working it out. Um, so they've stayed the hearing for um, a few weeks and they will you know, they'll continue it and finish it up um, when the property owners can attend in a few weeks. But it, it, it brings about um, need for potentially, or discussing the potential of changing the, the planning regulations because the planning board heard the same project for a conditional, not a conditional use permit, but to, to vote to decide that it was a, an appropriate yeah. use yep. for those properties. And, and the planning board, um, I think, had a different view of that process, or, or is weighting their um, participation in the process differently than the ZBA is. And what I mean by that is that the applicant is weighing the planning board's vote in that regard very heavily which was not really the planning board's intention. And so um, it, it brings to mind um, whether or not it's worthwhile to maybe meet with the zoning board, the planning board and the zoning board together to decide how outside of hearing a case, when there's nothing on the docket, how's the zoning ordinance working and, and maybe work together to suggest some revisions to make it a little bit more practical. Mm. So um, it was really interesting to see that play out mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But they're doing a really good job for a, a completely new slate of residents. Okay. It's really it's really good. They're being very thoughtful. Um, this week I will be with Miles and Stormwater and I will attend Rec if you would like me to. I think I, they're probably starting hiring. I don't know how you feel yeah. about that and if you Well if you have to be there. Rec is Thursday. Oh Thursday. That's right. Stormwater is Wednesday um, with budget. And by the way, you'll have your new budget secretary starting on Wednesday. So I will be here um, a few minutes early to show her the camera and okay. get her acclimated. Um what else is on the agenda for Rec? I've been done for a couple months. There may be updates on grants or activities okay. to do with kids. Um, um, have you told them about what the plan is on credit card? No, because they haven't met yet. Okay, so um, if you want to come, I'll come for, for a little bit. I mean, you'll, I'll you'll come. It's fine. I'll be up every night, but um, just to get that cleared up and what that was about. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, review of correspondence. Is it this? I don't think there's anything but this, right? It's just the purchase order. All right. So we have a purchase order for LaBelle Computer Services. 
Computer technical support for 10 hours for $760. This is the, buy, this is the allotment that you buy. Uh, it's 10 hours, hours at a discounted time. rate that we buy it at a time. So he's out of hours now. Okay, so um, PO number is 1620. Yeah. Oh, make, go ahead, you make a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll move purchase order 1620. Uh, to LaBelle Computer Services for $760 for I'll 10 second. hours of support. Okay. Any discussion? Nope. Um, do you have they come up with a plan on um, putting the rotor up in the ceiling yet, or did that to go away? As someone was supposed to do that, okay. and, and that hasn't happened, so okay. I will follow up on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Oh, and that's coming out out of um, IT hardware and software services. You know, okay. All right. Um, there you go. All right. I'll move purchase order one six seven eight uh, to BNB offset for twenty six hundred fifty three dollars and twenty cents for two hundred and fifty ten reports. Okay, I'll second it. Any discussion? We need two hundred fifty ten reports. Every year she prints fewer of them, and so we need some printed, yeah. but um, it's always a question whether or not, you know, how many do we need? It was the first year of SB2, so it'll be, you know, we still have a number of them out there. I'll talk to Kate about how we're doing with numbers. They're not available for the deliberative session. The, de the deadline is after the deliberative session. So you're missing your in-person okay. traffic mm -hmm. until town meeting and yeah. voting. And yeah. so um, she did bring several boxes down there, and, and they left on voting day. Yeah. But I don't know if it was different. I think, you know, so, so 250, I think, was just a shot in the dark for first year of SB2. Mm -hmm. So we already printed these. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought this was it's an the, additional order. This is not an additional order. Okay. This is the only the, uh, order. This one. I do not believe the there's one. an intention for a reorder. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. 26, 50, 320. Okay. 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 All right. I'm so, a motion to accept? Uh, Did you already do it? Yep. Okay, then I second it. Yep. Okay, all right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. Um, you were talking about the um, gas lines, mm -hmm. and I texted Jody, and uh, there are a couple houses on Highland Ave that have, that the gas line has come up, Highland Ave, mm -hmm. for a couple of the houses, and she said there was also houses on Route 4 mm -hmm. that have. In Rollinsburg? Yes. Because they must have gone beyond the Dover line to go. It is. It's okay. in Rollinsburg. It's okay. just barely in Rollinsburg. Barely in Rollins, and they must have come off of uh, Oak, Oak Street. Yeah. Both of them. Alrighty. Thank you. Any yeah. other comments? On the gas line, I would just, Lorraine Hanson, yeah. Watson Lane, I would just like to mention if we're looking at, I think the idea of finding out who, what community said no is important. I think of the Merrimack Valley in Massachusetts. We want to know it's a really good company. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, exactly. Anybody else? See yeah? Okay, um, we have to go into non-public for personnel? Yes. Okay, um, so we will, this right. is the end of, there will be adjournment after that, so. Um, I move we go into non-public session for personnel. Okay, I'll second it. Oh, roll call. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so we'll wait for the camera.